first film that we're going to talk about today, or tonight, or whenever you're watching this, 17 years from now, in a far off world, in Australia, in a ditch, uh, I went and saw Joker. Can you please stop bothering my kid? Sorry. Arthur, I have some bad news for you. <laughs> Which, um, I didn't really have many expectations going into it for us. I like the character of the Joker. I don't really like superheroes. I've mentioned this before. I don't really care about superheroes. That's why I can kind of tolerate Batman in a way because he's just a cunt with loads of money. He doesn't have any superpowers, he's just got loads and loads of money and gadgets and stuff. And like a lot of the sort of villains or that, they're just sort of mental folk as well. Mad as a fucking brush, which will be the tagline for this video. But yeah, so we went and, uh, me and my girlfriend went and saw Joker, but not at the illustrious, splendiferous uh, View Cinema in Edinburgh. We went to um, the Hovel um, Shiphole Cinema in St Andrews and saw the Joker. And in this cinema, it's like... Even if there was nobody in front of you and you're sitting in the perfect seat, you'd still have to kind of move to see past imaginary people. And you can't, there's no fucking cup holders to put your beer or your fucking wine. It's like, and the floor's at a fucking 90 degree angle and you can't even fucking, you can't put anything on it. You've got to hold your beer so it goes all warm and shit. It's just fucking terrible. I think they're like, oh, we don't want to knock it down because it's a landmark. Fucking hell, it was shit. At least the film was good. And at least I didn't get shot. Which is, you know, silver lining. But, Joker. So, love the film, love Joaquin Phoenix, love uh, his performance as Arthur Fleck, who's a, a madman, mad as a fucking brush some might say, who uh, is a sort of failed clown, sort of entertainer, clown, and he's a sort of failed stand-up comedian. Um, there's so many different things that I really, really liked, but I liked how he was like all sort of like skinny and horrible, and he was greasy and dirty, and he like he lived with his mum who he was caring for and looking after, and it was just it was just a, such a good oh it was so good. I'll go into like spoilers for most of these things. Same with any of these sort of videos, but I'll put spoilers because editor man who's me or editor Nelly who's a good editor Nelly you she what and um, we'll put spoilers up. Um, so, yeah, so basically the film sort of starts and uh, Arthur Fleck sort of, he's on medication and he's on lots of different medications from like a sort of social worker, there's like sort of people like sort of caring for him in the community and stuff and then uh, like she's speaking to him, she's like a counsellor and she's speaking to him and he wants to up his medication because he doesn't think it's working and he suffers for like this sort of laughing, like he's like <laughs> He doesn't do it. He sort of pains him when he when he laughs. Like he's involuntarily like laughing, some sort of condition. I don't even know if that's a real thing. It probably is. Um, but yes, yeah, so at the start of the film, like he's he's like a sort of clown, and um, it's just a steady decline into like misery for him because like he gets he's sort of spinning around a sign. Everybody, I've shown the trailer. He's sort of spinning around a sign, and these kids steal his sign, and then he chases them, and then he gets beaten up, and then. Um, one of his friends he gives him a gun and says, yeah, you need to look after yourself, blah, blah, blah. And then he takes this gun and he's a, another clown-related thing. He's entertaining all these kids at like a sort of hospital and he drops the gun. Then he gets sacked from his work he's been beaten up. He's been humiliated by kids. He's been sacked from his work. He lives with his mum. He's on medication. He's mentally ill. He's like, oh, fuck. And then um, after he gets sacked from his work, the sort of pivotal key scene... Um, one of the key scenes in it is he's on a, a subway train and there's these sort of Wall Street dickhead drunk guys who are, I think they're meant to, like, I didn't realise this at the time, but they're meant to work for Thomas Wayne, who's Bruce Wayne's dad. Um, they're meant to work for him and uh, they're all giving shit to this woman or something and like Arthur sort of is like, ha <laughs> ha, he's laughing, but he's still dressed as like the clown stuff on his way home from getting sacked after a gun falling out, it was really funny, and a gun fell out in the hospital. But uh, they're all like, oh, what the fuck are you laughing for? And then they kick the shit out of him again, and he's been beaten down again, and you're like, oh, God, this poor man. This poor psychopath. Well, he's not really a psychopath at this point yet, but then uh, he's still got the gun on him, and he shoots two of them, 
and one like in self defense, and then one of them runs away and he fucking like executes them. And so because of this, there's like a big massive sort of uprising of like the lower class and the disenfranchised. I think that's what he used because I had notes. Where's my notes? I wrote down all these notes and on the fucking other side of the fucking room. Yeah, disenfranchised, which is a line he uses when he's been interviewed by Robert De Niro, but I'll get to that. But anyway, so there's like a big uprising, sort of the poor against the rich, and like they're wanting to take over Gotham City, and the person who's like the big head honcho in Gotham, rich people, is Thomas Wayne, who's Bruce Wayne's dad, blah, blah, blah. But it was so fucking good, but sort of key, uh, key characters and stuff, there was his mum, who's called Penny, is like the old woman, who is from uh, American Horror Story, um... She was alright in it, like, she, her sort of thing is that she keeps sort of alluding to the, like, I need to speak to Thomas Wayne, I need to send letters to Thomas Wayne, and Arthur ends up looking at one of her letters, and basically she's saying that Arthur is a love child of um, Thomas Wayne, so then you're kind of like, oh no, please fucking God, he's not going to be Batman's brother, is he? But it turns out she's just mental, and she was just talking shite, and there was to do with something else that her... Her actual boyfriend was like abusing her and him and something to do with Thomas Wayne done something for her, kept her in the asylum or kept her in the hospital or something but she suffers a stroke um, at some point and then so Arthur learns the sort of truth that he's not Thomas Wayne's son and everything and he ends up killing his mum because he's, he's lost it, he's mad as a fucking brush by this point. Also, through all this as well, like this, I'm just rambling about what happens in the film. Um, he goes to meet, uh, he's at the Wayne's of Manor, outside the gate, and he's got balloons and everything. You see a young Bruce Wayne. Na, 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 na. That was the music from it, I don't know what that was about. Um, a young Bruce Wayne sort of sitting there, and he's like, goes to the gate, and Arthur's sort of, like doing tricks and stuff, and he's like, he holds his face at one point, press, smile in that puss. Um, and then somebody runs out, and at this point I don't think you've seen Thomas Wayne, and if you did I went for a piss, because I drank during the pictures like a normal civilised person. Um, and I was like, oh fuck, who's that? Is, is he going to play Thomas Wayne? And I was like, oh no, wait, but it turns out it was Alfred. But the guy who plays Alfred, and I was trying to work it for ages, sitting there in the pictures, like, who the fuck is that? And it's the guy who plays Rollo Haynes in the Black Mirror episode, The Black Museum. The guy that runs the fucking like horror museum. I forget, I wrote his name down, what's his name? Uh, oh, Douglas Hodge, he's fucking great, I really, really like him. Rollo Haynes, owner, proprietor. Sure you want to do this? This place ain't for the faint-hearted. Sure I can handle it. Not everyone can. But anyway, so he's in it, they've got that Penny woman in it. But, uh, and then also the other sort of main point of it is that he's, Arthur's also like a sort of stand-up comedian, or wants to be a stand-up comedian. And uh, like he meets a woman in his like, I'll digress. Earlier on in it, he sort of Robert De Niro was on the TV and he's sort of got his own like sort of Jay Leno sort of comedy show type thing where he has guests on and there's a band and stuff. Or he's got a game show type thing, and um, Arthur sort of sees him on the TV and he sort of fantasizes like has delusions about wanting to be you know famous and be on the TV for Robert De Niro's TV show. And then he also fancies himself as like a stand-up comedian. But he meets this woman who lives in his building. Um, and he sort of starts a relationship with her. But I think it's all kind of in his head. Because he's delusional and he's a psychopath. Um, and he's mad as a fucking brush. Um, I might put a counter on the bottom for that. I don't know how much work I'll give myself. Um, so yeah, so basically he wants to be a stand-up comedian. And he does a bit of stand-up. He invites her there. But then is she really there or is she not there? Who knows? Um, but he, he obviously has got the involuntary laughing and he's sort of like, ha ha, he can't get his jokes out and he's laughing and then eventually um, there's people who've recorded him or something or somebody's recorded him. I don't really know how this has happened in the 1980s. Somebody's recorded him and sent footage of him like laughing and sort of fucking up his jokes and unable to get his punchlines out um, to Robert De Niro and he's like taking the piss out of him on his TV show and Arthur sees this and he's like livid about it and really, really angry. But in this day and age, somebody who stood on stage and manically laughed and ruined all their own jokes could be a fucking comedy routine, you know? I'd go and fucking see that. That's my sort of shit. But because 
he's uh, filming this stuff, these sort of clips of him like fucking up his jokes or laughing through his jokes, it uh, becomes like a sort of viral sensation as the kids would say. And he gets invited on to Robert De Niro's show. And this is where he dresses up in the classic sort of red suit that you ever really seen in the adverts where he's like dancing in the stairs. That's another thing that annoyed me was that uh, um the bit where he's dancing in the stairs, there's like memes, there's like wrestling memes from dancing to like Sexy Boy by Shawn Michaels and stuff. The bit where he's dancing on the stairs um, isn't as good as the bit where after he kills the three guys in the subway station, he's kind of in a toilet and he's sort of like dancing about. Like that's better and it's more creepy and sinister. It's That's better than him dancing on the stairs. But yeah, but... So anyway, so he, he gets invited on the show. But before all this happens as well, um, because of this... Is this at the same time? Is this where he's wearing the suit? I don't think he's wearing the suit. There's these police come to his door and they're like, right, uh, we we think that you might have shot blah 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 and he runs away from the police and he runs through a train and the police are sort of chasing him. I'm sure the police actually shoot like an innocent person and this causes more outrage and oh the rich are against the poor and oh we're disenfranchised, blah blah blah. Um, but he, as Arthur Fleck runs through the train he puts on one of the joker masks that everybody's wearing now because they know that the guy that killed the three men on the train was clown paint. So he actually steals a mask that people are using to mimic him and puts it on and uses that to avoid and then he puts it in the bin and uses that to get past the police. Oh! <laughs> superb! Fucking great. But, um, yeah, so the sort of climax of the film um, is fucking... It was great. He, he, goes, he manages to go on his show and he tells some sort of, you know, horrible jokes and he gets he makes uh, Robert De Niro call him the Joker gets announced as the Joker as oh, the Joker ha ah. ha but so he sits there and does all his spiel to Robert De Niro and I think Robert De Niro's character is meant to be there's a film called King of Comedy that I've not seen that people have referenced to me uh, that Robert De Niro's character plays like a sort of stalker of like a celebrity like comedian person or something like that um, but uh, Arthur Fleck ends up shooting Robert De Niro in the head and then he gets arrested and as he's being dragged out uh, he gets saved. I'm sure somebody crashes into like the police car or something and um, you think, oh fuck is he dead? But then all the sort of clown, dis disenfranchised people all sort of rally up and uh, take him and then he sort of starts dancing that and then you know. And then during all this as well, this is where Bruce Wayne's uh, parents get killed in the sort of scuffle of all this happening. So it ties up all these loose ends and then at the end I think he's in like I don't know, like, I read this on late, I don't remember this happened, I think we just left. Is this post-credits where he was, like, in the asylum and he was like, ah, you don't get the joke, ha <laughs> ha, and he runs away. So he gets arrested at some point. I thought it would have been better if he didn't get arrested, they just sort of ended it like that. But Joker, fantastic. Joaquin Phoenix is fantastic. It was so good, it was so dark, it was so bleak, it was really, really, really good. It was all about mental health. I don't know if that's, like, a, a new thing. I'd be very, very interested to see um, Doug Stanhope's take on... Joker because as well for the budget it was 55 to 70 million and the box office it is the highest grossing R-rated film of all time and it's only been out like a month and it's made 856.3 million now I'm thankful for that I mean it's really really good that a film like this but it sort of seems to like in, in the past year or two or in this day and age everybody's all sort of there seems to be an awful lot of um, obsession or pounding in the media or anything about mental health, suicide, depression, it seems like, or suicide, it seems like it's more, this is a morbid thing to say, it seems like it's very, suicide mental health is kind of a popular thing, like a popular issue than what it was years and years ago. So I think if this film had come out in a previous time, it might not be so successful, but is it just being successful because mental health is like the new having mental health issues or supposed mental health issues is the new current trend. That's why it's popular or is it just popular because it's a good film? Difficult to judge, difficult to understand. But yeah, I'd like, very much like to see uh, Doug Stanhope's take on Joker, which is French for Joker. Um, yeah, so that was Joker. The next film that I saw for this episode was Fractured, which 
and this is why I've done this, because I was, I was going to wait and um, do Doctor Sleep, because it's only another film that I want to see, and I really, really, really hate Ewan McGregor. But that film came out, I mean, today we're recording this is Friday, so that film will be out today. But I have to work a fucking 10, 12 hour shift, and I'm not going to be able to see it until Wednesday when I actually get a day off. So the review of Doctor Sleep won't be out until next week sometime. So I was like, what am I going to do? Because there's fuck all else out in October. There was some sort of stupid fucking film about some app on somebody's phone and oh I put in the day I died and then it made a oh it makes spooky monsters Ooh, and I was like yeah. I'd go and watch it but I don't give a fuck. Our phones have become essential. Apps keep track of our schedules, our fitness, our love lives. But what if an app could tell you how long? I got 63 years. 57 years. Before you die. This couldn't be arse, so it was like Joker, and then I saw this one called Fracture on Netflix, and I fucking loved it. Um, I don't know, I would look up the scores, but I was going to write them down on like Metacritic and Rotten Tomatoes and stuff for Fracture and Joker, but who gives a fuck what they say? But, <clears throat> so, Fractured is a. I'll try my best to not do spoilers until the end, but I'll put spoilers anyway. So, Fractured basically. There's a dad who, and this is like, it's a, a character development film, it's a film all about one guy who goes mad, mad as a fucking brush. <sighs> anyway, so, there's a dad and a wife and a little girl and they're sort of driving somewhere for, I'm going to have a cigarette for this. I was going to have a cigarette during my Joker uh, discussion, but I didn't, I didn't even have a fucking lighter, that's good. Eh? You set up all these props, you know, you set up, oh I've got, I've got a cigarette, oh I've got a lighter, oh I've got this, oh I've got that. Oh, uh, then you fucking go and sit there. Oh, Madman Pondo's falling down. Um, Madman Pondo's falling down, and you're just kind of like, oh, that's a fucking nice face, I'll get it. I was gonna just put it on my head, but I can't be arsed, you know. Fully posable face hugger. That is from a box that I got, by the way, for the best alien film, according to me, who's always right. Uh, Alien Covenant, and if you don't think so, fuck you. Anyway. We're on our way to Minneapolis. It was an accident. I fell. Daddy! Well, sooner or later, everybody does. Right, Dad? I nearly had you, didn't I? Fractured. So, yeah, so they're driving, uh, Summer for Thanksgiving and they stop at like this little shitty like gas station and beside the gas station is a kind of like construction site that's all kind of like not taped off but it's kind of like the the bottom bit of like the building, like the basement bit of the building and then the top bits like the walls and the upper bit of the building's not been built yet so it's right through this gas station and it sort of starts off that the guy's got a drinking problem or he did have a drinking problem but uh, his little girl's got like a Walkman and she needs batteries for her Walkman but he needs to go and buy gas and he needs to go and buy batteries, but he also sees these little miniature bottles of Jack Daniels. And this, this is the first point of the film where I was like, that's kind of interesting. He's, the dad's either got the choice to buy batteries for his daughter, or buy Jack Daniels for himself. And he buys Jack Daniels for himself, and uh, he ends up pouring it in a, cup, in a coffee cup, and then he ends up spilling it in the back of the seat when he's trying to find her Walkman. And during all this uh, commotion and fracas, um, his daughter sort of walks there to this sort of construction site, it's really, really high up, and a sort of dog sort of goes over to her, this sort of rabid sort of dog, and uh, the dad throws, what's his name again? Um, Sam Worthington's the actor, and I really, really like him, I don't know what else he's in, apparently he's going to be, I looked him up, and he's going to be in the next two Avatar films, I shan't be watching them, he's fucking good, he's really good. So anyway, there's this dog, and uh, his name's Ray Munro, the main character, he throws a brick, like at the dog, but that kind of scares the dog and also scares the girl and she falls back, like, quite high up into the sort of construction site thing and then, like, as he's doing this, he just, like, runs to save her and he falls in as well and then he kind of, he's, he's all groggy and he gets up and the little girl's got a fractured arm fractured it's not the only thing that's fractured his mind Um. anyway, so his, uh, so his wife comes down and she's like, alright, we need to take him to the hospital, we need to take him to the hospital 
So he gets in the car, drives up, and then they get to the hospital, and then his wife and his daughter go into the hospital, and then she gets like an x-ray. Hospital is really, really weird. Like, they're not going to take his medical insurance, and the woman that's typing all his details in is asking like really strange sort of questions about like his ex-wife and stuff, who's dead, who like died in a car crash or something like that. Um, and then, so they're, they're not going to use his insurance, so he needs to pay cash. And then um, there's this doctor who meets his little girl and she's saying, oh, you've got the most beautiful eyes and he's been really, really creepy and stuff to like, his little girl. It's, and his dad's looking at him. He just makes like st the, like overly like strange, weird comments to the little girl and says, we'll take him to the next room. The wife and the little girl, they like say, oh, only one parent's allowed to come down to the extra room with him. So he's like, all right, I'll wait here. And then he sort of goes to sleep and he wakes up and he's got like a little plaster thing on his head. A little dot and then his wife and daughter have, have like went missing in the hospital. He speaks to this woman at the front desk and he goes fuck he goes eventually goes mental. He's like, I want to find my wife and daughter, I want to find my wife and daughter. And you, you feel you feel for the guy, you're like, oh fuck, where have they went? What's happened? <clears throat> and then um so he can't find them and there's there's no record of them being in the hospital and he's like, ah oh, fuck sake. He's like, what's happened? What's happened? He's like he's like, I saw them, they got taken down, and eventually he gets like sort of he like tries to like get into a bit of the hospital he's not allowed in and he gets kind of like pepper sprayed or something and he gets locked in this room from the hospital security guards and he's like you think at this point from his point of view that either he's mental which he could be or the hospital's like doing some sort of like weird get out organ trafficking thing they've like stolen his wife and his daughter and he can't get them back so he's locked in this room from the security he ends up like inject himself with like lots and lots of like ad adrenaline that he finds in this room and he like breaks out and he runs away and like he gets he runs out of the hospital and then he gets the police involved he phones the police they come back in and they're like oh for fuck's sake and he speaks to the doctor who was on call that spoke to his daughter and they don't have any recollection of it and you're kind of like are they all are they all lying like are they all making this up to just to like try and cover their tracks and it's oh, I you're on you're on his side at this point like you all is not as it seems though. Um, and it's they said that he was brought in for head trauma for being in a car crash. That's what the, the doctors say about him being in the hospital. And so you're like, right, so did that happen? Did they just knock him out? Did they drug him? Did they take his wife and family? Did, did they even exist? Like, there's so many questions going on in your head. And eventually this sort of psychologist at the hospital is trying to speak to him and he's like, right. He's like, you don't believe me, we'll get the police and we'll take you back to like, the scene of the scene of where she fell. And then they, they fall back, they, they all go down to the thing, uh, this sort of bit where the little girl fell into the ditch. And um, he, he's like, he's like, there was a dog, there was a dog. And no one's like believing him, because like, there's like a pool of blood that wasn't really there at the start when she fell. And he's like, he's like oh, it must have been my blood. And he's like, I don't think so. Nobody's really believing him and all the police are kind of like looking at him. And then uh, the dog, like no one believes him. She's like, are you making up this dog? And then the dog appears, so the dog was real, and then that's sort of affirm you're like, oh, he must be right, they must have taken it. And this is what a bit that didn't really make any sense. There's like all these police and this psychologist that he kind of locks in a room in like the gas station bit, because he takes one of the policeman's guns, like holds her hostage, and he's like, everybody fuck off, everybody fuck off. All the police have got the advantage, um, and the psychologist, and they just kind of like let them steal one of their cars and drive back to the hospital. That bit didn't really make any sense. But so basically, like now he's now he's affirmed in his, his belief. That they've stole his, um, that they stole his wife and his daughter, and he drives back to the hospital, and he steals like a doctor's coat, and he, he goes downstairs and he fights with the, fights. With, I think he might kill the security guard like in the lift that goes down to the bottom bit where they took his wife and that into the X-ray room, and then he's when he goes down there, he sees like a box that says like human organs, and you're like, oh fuck, what's going on here? And then he goes in a room and he sees his wife and daughter. And uh, he, he goes to save them, and you're like, holy fucking, he's got a gun, and he ends up shooting somebody, and everybody's like, no, you don't need to do this, you don't understand, blah, blah, he shoots, he shoots them, and he ends up getting his wife and daughter on a thing, and he, he takes them out, and he manages to escape with them. But, plot twist. It turns out that the wife and the daughter that he saved from, like, getting their organs transported, uh, isn't even his wife and his daughter. His mind's fractured and he's just stolen some fucking sick person out of the bottom of the hospital and the organ thing isn't even human organs that's just what he's thinking in his head and he's actually fucking mad as a fucking brush and it turns out that the very start when his daughter fell into the hole she died 
and his wife comes down and she's like fucking screaming at him and that and he accidentally sort of pushes her and she falls and like her head goes through this like metal spike and they both die. So the entire thing through the the whole film is like none of that's even real. And but then when they were all so another thing I sort of thought was like another sort of nitpicky thing. I really really enjoyed it. I really really enjoyed his acting. He's really really fucking good. He's a really really sympathetic character. I mean, until the very end when you're kind of like, oh right, well he's, he's mad. He fucking killed his wife and his uh, daughter. Um, when he takes when he takes this sort of like sick person out to the car. He opens up the boot of the car and you see his wife and his uh, daughter's body in the back of the car and then he's got this uh, sick person like in the back and he's driving away, like driving away from the hospital, like he's oh, he saved his wife and that and he looks back and his wife's sitting there and she's like speaking to him but it's all just in his head and then you just see his eyes go all dead and he's, he's, his mind's fucked, his mind's fractured, oh it's fucking great. But the thing is that when they said he was like, oh yes sir, you, you came in you were like in a car crash. I was like, no I wasn't, I wasn't in a car crash, I was waiting for my wife and daughter. I don't know when this car crash is meant to have been. Like, was it just when he hit his head and he came into the hospital and just kind of fell asleep and that's when he woke up? Like, did any of that happen? Was that all in his head? And, like, what car crash? Because there's a bit at the start when he's driving to the hospital and he's, like, speeding really fast, like, past all these cars. Like, was there a car crash? If there was a car crash... Fucking cat's going mental. If there was a car crash, then surely his car would be all fucked up, but it wasn't. So that was... I didn't really understand that, but... Oh, Fractured, thoroughly enjoyed it. A, a film from Netflix that wasn't absolutely shit, like Ark or fucking what other stuff been on Netflix? There's a film called A Stranger Outside that I'm going to do a little video about over the next month. A little uh, sort of reaction, watch along -y, best of the worst, rip off type thing. Um, but it's not trash like that. Like Fractured was actually good. Like there's little nitpicky things in it. But it was good and it was weird and it was creepy and he didn't know what was going on and it was a really good twist at the end. Like you always kind of thought that maybe he was fucked in the head, like because nobody really believed him. Like there's no record of your daughter being here. There's no record of this. There's no camera footage of them, but there was no cameras sitting at the bit where they were at and stuff. That like you're kind of like, did they just change the film out? Why is there jumps in the film and the police are there looking at it and they're kind of believing him? But are, are the police on the hospital side? But it turns out that he just killed them both and he's made it all up in his head because he's. Fracked. His his mind's fractured. He's mad as a fucking brush. So in conclusion, I would down the fucking arse off of Joker, and I would down the fucking arse off of Fractured. They are great fucking films. They both tied in with the mental health man. It's a fucking rush thing, which is quite good, and it was meant to be a Halloween episode. But I wasn't able to do it because everyone all got fucked up. But I finally made it, so this is episode 3 of Cinema Slurs. Like, subscribe and all that shit. And I will see you all in a few days, possibly, for Doctor Sleep and um, some other stuff. There will be a lot more stuff coming in the next few months over the festive period. But, fuck yeah, Cinema Slurs. Episode 3 Mad as a fucking brush Search the hospital! Nobody needs to get hurt I mean he's a head case Put down all your guns What have you done to my family? Quick, you take my family!